Hey guys, welcome back to the Mina Does Art Stuff YouTube channel. My name is Mina and on this channel we do art stuff. First of all, I just want to say apologies if you can hear my laptop in the background. It is processing some stuff. I was hoping it would be finished before I had to get to recording, but it's still going, so we're just powering through. Um, this is a late night recording session. It's about half nine in the evening, so I hope you can excuse the poor lighting situation that we have going on, but there is not much I can do about that right now. Uh, today is actually the 1st of January 2023, so Happy New Year. This video probably won't be coming out too soon, but soon enough, hopefully. Um, but I wanted to talk about some stuff that I got from the London Graphic Centre back in early December, so not quite a month ago, maybe about three weeks ago. Um, so during the month of December, I actually did a Vlogmas on my other YouTube channel on my knitting channel um, and on one of the days my older daughter and I went into London for just a fun mummy daughter day out and we popped into the London Graphic Centre as it happened it was almost by coincidence I kind of forgot that it was in Common Garden and we just happened to be walking past it so we popped in and we had a lot of fun. Turns out they had a few promotions going on at the time. One of them being if you spent a certain amount of money, you got this goodie bag with lots of goodies in it. And I was actually surprised by the quantity of stuff included. And that's one of the things we're going to look at today. But they also had a um, uh, another sort of thing happening where they had a bunch of these golden tickets hidden all over the shop. And if you found one, you win a prize, essentially. So my daughter is very... <laughs> very much um, driven and incentivized by winning things, by prizes and things like that. So of course we were not leaving that shop until we found one. We did find a golden ticket in the end, tucked away behind some blocks of Fabriano watercolor paper as it happened. And um, and she won a set of glitter, um, glittery felt tip pens. She was beyond ecstatic with that. And I got a few goodies, I got my goodie bag, and yeah, all good. I'm gonna go through some of the stuff that I got and I will swatch them, but um, a couple of bits that I got ended up in my stocking for Christmas. Um, I explained that in an earlier video when I go through the art haul of stuff that I got for Christmas, the art supplies I got for Christmas, so I won't be showing those things again because you'll have already seen them. Um, but yeah, anyway, so first things first, I'm gonna go over the items I actually got that I purchased, shall we say, and I'll keep the stuff that was in the goodie bag, a bit of a surprise. So first thing that I picked up, oh, the other thing was everything in the store was an additional 20% off the, the lowest price listed. So this, the first thing, <laughs> this book, this Fabriano Venezia book, it's a drawing paper, 200 GSM, 90 pounds, 23 by 30 centimeters or 9 by 12 inches, 48 sheets, um, acid free Fabriano paper. I've seen so many artists use this for mixed media work and I've been very interested in it. Um, and it says here on the back the artwork on the cover reproduces the modern mosaics present in the San Marco area of Venice. Um, yeah, absolutely beautiful uh, looking book. Funnily enough, and I haven't shared it yet in an, in a haul video, it will be coming up in a future one. I did buy a smaller version of this um, earlier in the year when we went to on a trip to the Cotswolds. There was a little art shop there and they had it. Um, and the smaller version, you know what? Let me just grab it, I might as well show you. So this is a smaller version. So this one is six by nine and this one is nine by 12. So it's literally half the size but that's fine. This one was $16.95. They're not cheap books, but that was actually a pretty good price for this one. I've seen online it going for similar prices. So I wanted to support the small local art shop. And so I did purchase this one there. This one, however, I don't know if the price is still on it. I might have taken it off. Was, um, I can't remember what the original price was for it, but then they had it marked down to, I think it was like 21 pounds, which was the same as Jackson's had it, but then it was also an additional 20% off that price on that particular day. So this ended up costing me about the same as the smaller one. So 
even though I'd already had the smaller one, I really want, I originally really wanted to get the larger size. Um, and when I realized it was the same price as the smaller one, I thought, you know what, I'm going to treat myself. This is like my Christmas present to myself and along with the other couple of things, <laughs> um, that I got as well. And the other thing that I got for a similar sort of reason was this set of Liquitex heavy body acrylics in the vibrant colors. These are six 20 millimeter, milliliter tubes of heavy body acrylic paint by Liquitex. And again, I've seen this online for around 22 pounds usually. And then on Jackson's, I think it's closer to about 20 pounds. Um, which is still quite a lot for six small tubes of paint. But, um, like I said again, the London Graphic Centre had it for the same price and then it was an additional 20% off that. So it's actually the most affordable I have found this particular set at any particular time. So the colours you get in the set are... Um, Yellow light Hansa, vivid red orange, medium magenta, brilliant purple, light blue permanent, and vivid lime green. So I thought that'd be a really fun sort of colour palette to play around with, and a nice little, a nice amount in each one. They're not, it's not an insignificant quantity of paint, but I imagine you know if I work through any of these really quickly, then I know which colours I like, and I can go ahead and purchase more of them. So I'm just going to leave these off to the side here because we will swatch those in a moment. And then finally in this Derwent pencil box, which has no Derwent pencils in it whatsoever, um, I needed to spend a little bit more money just to hit the amount required to get the goodie bag. So I was like, I don't need to be told twice that I need to buy more art supplies. <laughs> So I did pick up a few extra things. One, I picked up this Koei Noor Hardmouth Magic Pencil, and this is in the yellows, reds, and oranges. I was hoping to find the greens version, but they didn't have it in the store. But this is the um, oranges, reds, and yellows. I wanted to get one that was going to be a bit more of a harmonious color palette. I have one in my clutch pencil, which I'm not sure where that is right now. Um, which has like all three primary colors in it, which is great, but sometimes it can be a bit, um, or it can be a bit jarring, the colors to work with. So I wanted to get one that was a bit more harmonious. And then I picked up five of the Luminance pencils as well, which we will swatch out as well. I got uh, dark phthalo cyanine green. I got hibiscus pink. I got perylene brown. Uh, Burnt Sienna 10% and Violet Grey. My daughter helped me pick some of these colours. There was a few others I was looking at as well, but she helped me narrow down that selection. So I've added these five to my collection of Caran d'Ache Luminance colours. So I'm going to go ahead and change out the battery on the camera because it's flashing at me. And then we will go through the rest of the items under this lovely red bag. We have all the goodies that came in the bag which like I said a surprising amount of stuff was in there so let's push it all back over and we'll go through it one at a time first of all is this London Graphics uh, Centre branded ruler which is always handy to have then we have this pack of, from Stabilo with a range of their pens yes so we have a Stabilo pen 68 brush nib in this sort of purple colour. See there's a colour name on here, there isn't. Okay. Then we have a Stabilo 0 0.88-0.4 fine. That's just a fine liner in green. And then we have a Stabilo Pen 68. So these are all different, right? Oh no, this is the same as the other one. But this one is not a brush pen. This one's just a bullet nib. Okay. And then finally we have the Stabilo Sensor fine liner in this bright pink which I will probably give to my daughter because she already had her eye on it when she first spotted it. Then we have this De La Rowney artist sketchbook A6 size um, again pretty standard sort of cartridge paper it feels quite nice it's nice thick paper it's 
what is this? 160 GSM for 109 pounds, which is quite nice. Um, maybe we'll do some swatching in this one. We'll see, it's a nice little pocket size. Then we have this Jaskar Eraser Sharp combination ink, pencil, eraser, and pencil sharpener. So that's interesting. I've never seen this before. Let's get that open. So it's a combination. I guess this is the pencil and this is supposed to be for ink, I suppose. And then there's the pencil sharpener in the middle. So maybe we can test that out. And there were two Poskas in the bag, which was quite cool. So there's this Uni Posca light pink in the PC3M. So that's the smaller bullet nib. And then there's this metallic, metallic green in the PC5M. This one has a plastic wrapper on it. So I find actually just twisting the cap um, helps to get the plastic off. And this one has the slightly thicker bullet nib. Then we have a Micron O3, nice small fine liner. There is a Tombow water-based brush pen in the N15, which if I'm not mistaken is just black. So that's the brush end, and then there's the bullet end as well. There's two of the Unipin fine liners. One is the 1.0, and that's just a nice fat chunky fine liner tip. And then we have the chisel 2.0, so that's a chisel tip uh, fine liner, which is interesting. And then we also have a Winsor & Newton Pro marker in blush. And this is an alcohol-based marker. So that's the, is that a bullet nib or a brush nib? I guess we'll find out. And then on this end, we have the chisel. So that must be a bullet nib. And it, ooh, that smells. I don't really use alcohol-based markers, so I don't have any experience with them. So that'll be interesting to try out. Then there is a tube of System 3 acrylic in lemon yellow, which is nice, Not which is a color I don't actually have in my acrylics. Then there's this sample box of two Winsor & Newton Artist oil colors, which is interesting. I don't use oil paints, but I will attempt swatching these out. We've got one in Smolt Dumont's Blue PV15. Uh, and then we've got Ruby Madder Alizarin, which is PR187. So I guess we will attempt testing those out, probably on a separate sheet of paper, because oil paint takes forever to dry. And I'll probably just use a palette knife to spread it so I can just wipe it clean. Then in this little packet from Caran Dash, there... Oh, there are two of their extra fine gouache colours in yellow and cerulean blue, I think it is. Let me just see. So yellow. Is there any pigment information? Uh, nope, just says it's made in Geneva. And then cerulean blue. Yep, just says gouache, extra fine. 10 milliliter tubes and that's about it so yeah that's cool two tubes of gouache and there's information in here about the different colors they have in the range 76 colors in the range apparently I did not know that Karen Dash did artist grade um, gouache I've heard of their studio line I didn't know they had the extra fine gouache in tubes so that's interesting um, then there's also another Caran d'Ache item here. This is a pan of watercolour, which is interesting. I, again, I didn't know Caran d'Ache did pan watercolours. Information in here about their different um, uh, products, I guess. And the pan that they included is English Red. So we will try that one out as well. It's PR101, red iron oxide. Then I have two rolls of tape. There is this, uh, looks like fabric tape. So 
so I'm not sure what that is used for. Oh, you can tear it by hand, so that's good to know. Um, but it's like a fabric canvasy type of material. And then the other one is a roll of MT tape, 15 millimeters by 10 meter roll of this blue spotty tape, which is always nice. There is this uh, Faber Castell eraser, no PVC, no dust, and it's green, which is interesting. I've not seen that before. Um, so we can give that a go. It says tear here. So, ah, okay. So that's to just expose the end. I guess we'll try that one out and see how that works. There is a sample of a Faber Castell Gold Faber pencil in colour 140. Doesn't actually have the colour name on here, so I'll have to look that one up and see what it is. It says 3.3 millimeter lead, excellent light fastness, break resistance due to secural bonding. Available as single pencil or in assorted tins. So it's available open stock, is what they're trying to say. Um, it says soft colour lay down. And yeah. So we'll try that one out. Like I said, lots of things to try out. And then there's this Derwent Academy selection. So there's a Derwent Academy watercolour pencil in orange. There's a water soluble marker. Derwent Academy doesn't have a colour name on the barrel. And then there's an oil pastel in, I don't know, I'll try and take that out. doesn't have a colour on it and then finally there is a tube of oil paint if I can get that off there we go in burnt umber so again we will try that out with the Windsor & Newton on a separate piece of paper and then in this bag with Pentel all over it we have honestly it's like a never-ending bag of supplies oil pastels Pentel Arts Oil Pastels information. Oh, and about their brush sign pens as well. So that's interesting. So we have three of the Pentel Oil Pastel sticks. So we'll try that out as well. And then there's a Pentel Energel 0 0.7. It's like a rollable pen. And then one of their brush sign pens in this lovely deep purple color. Okay. I actually have a selection of these already, which um, I don't have up here. I have them downstairs with my uh, diary for 2023, like my uh, planning diary. So in violet, this is the color. I don't think I have this color, so that's actually quite nice. All right, I'm gonna clear some space and then we can get to swatching all these supplies. I am genuinely quite shocked at the sheer volume of stuff that came in the goodie bag. Like, that's a lot of supplies. So yeah, let's, let's try them out.
done all the swatching now and I thought we could quickly take a look at everything before I sign off for this video. So first things first, here we have the oil paints. Um, so you can see I did show them straight after they were done. This isn't on any sort of special paper and you can see the oil has completely gone through this paper. Clearly not meant for oil paints but just for swatching them I just I didn't have anything else. So this is the Burnt Umber from the Derwent Academy. It is fairly matte looking Ooh, and yeah of course still wet. <laughs> oil paints take forever to dry. Um, and then we have the Smalt Blue from Winsor & Newton and the um, Maddo Alizarin Crimson colour from Winsor & Newton as well. So they look nice and beautiful, they have that nice sort of satiny sheen to them. And yeah, it's literally my first time using oil paints, so that was interesting. Um, and then on this side... I taped, I used the two tapes, the, the what, the MT tape and then the paper tape, the fabric tape rather at the bottom here, to stick this piece of uh, tracing paper down because a lot, because of the um, pastels, I didn't want that to smush around. So it's the Derwent pastel and then the um, Pentel pastels up top there. Um, I tried blending them, the Pentel pastels were pretty f hard as far as oil pastels go, so not the best quality, but they were fine to play around with. And then I got the Caran d'Ache gouache in yellow and then cerulean, and then I did a little mix here. And that's the Caran d'Ache watercolour in English red, which is really nice. And finally the acrylic, System 3 acrylic by um, Dealer Brownie in lemon yellow at the bottom there. So that's that. Then in the, here, let me zoom you guys in a bit. All right. This is the De La Rowney Artist Sketchbook in size A6, 160 GSM um, sketchbook. It looks like it's for mixed media. And yeah, so first page here we have the Posca pens, the Winsor & Newton Pro Marker, the various fine liners and brush pens, the Derwent Academy water-soluble brush pen. Then we have the Derwent Academy watercolour pencil, which actually worked really well. I was not expecting it to be that nicely soluble. Faber-Castell Gold Faber 140 colouring pencil. Um, I tested out the various erasers on it as well. And then we have some other fine liners and brush pens that I swatched out and tested here. Oh, and just in case I didn't mention it before, the Pro Marker is alcohol based, so it did uh, bleed through the paper, but not to the other side because I didn't put too many layers down. And then here we have the Koinor Magic Pencil. So you can kind of see how it looks in like a quick little sketch and the variation in color. And then here, I'm sorry, my a camera cut off part way through the swatching and I forgot to, I didn't notice, um, but we had the Caran d'Ache Luminance Pencils, the Burnt Sienna 10%, Hibiscus Pink, Violet Grey, Perylene Brown, which is like a Perylene Maroon colour, and Dark Thaler Cyanine Green. And I've got the numbers written down as well if you're interested. It's a really lovely sort of muted palette in and of itself. And then finally we have the Oh, Liquitex heavy body acrylics that are not completely dry it seems um, but that's fine and this is the the vivid colors set that I got in yellow light Hansa vivid red orange medium magenta brilliant purple light blue permanent and vivid lime green um, you can see they're still drying but they have a slight sheen to them which is pretty typical for standard acrylics and that's everything that's everything swatched out. I've already put a lot of the stuff away while I was waiting for things to dry. I'm just going to clip that open so it doesn't close on itself. It is now almost 11pm so it's time for me to go to bed. And I will see you guys in the next video very soon. Alright, take care. Bye!